Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about 10 things that super smart, savvy cruisers do so they, they can have an amazing cruise. Right after this. Hey everyone, Johnny from Bite Size Cruises. Welcome back to our channel. If it's your first time here, we go over all things cruising so that you can plan and go on an amazing cruise adventure. We're just a small travel agency trying to get you some great information here. So if that sounds good, we would love for you to subscribe. I'm trying to hit 4,000 subscribers. It's taking some time, but we're pushing through. So we do a lot of videos on tips and tricks to have an amazing cruise. These are 10 tri tips and tricks that savvy and super smart cruisers do all the time. So. Number one for me is set a budget for your cruise up front. This is going to save you a lot of trouble and a lot of wondering if or then if I should do this or then I can't do that. So choose a budget. Generally, what I do is I look at the cruise and say, okay, for this cruise, I cruise by myself a lot. I'll say this cruise, I don't want to spend any more than $3,000. That is $3,000 start to finish. That includes if I have to fly, if I have to get Ubers, whatever I have to do. So what I'll do is I'll start breaking that down. We're gonna do a whole video on how to budget, so I won't go through that right now, but I look at everything. I look at excursions, drink packages, dining packages, the whole nine yards when I'm building my budget for a cruise. So build yourself a budget, that way you have it, and you can pick out all the fun things that you wanna do. Next up is book your next cruise while you're on board your cruise. This is something that smart, savvy travelers do all the time. Number one, if you book a cruise while you're on a cruise and you're afraid, oh my God, I use a travel agent. I don't want to like screw them over. You're not, they get credit for it. When you go to book your cruise, they'll say, hey, we saw you book this through X travel agency. Uh, we'll give them credit for that. Is that good with you? You say yes, and it's good to go. You, when you book a cruise uh, on your cruise, you're definitely gonna get some kind of perk. You're gonna get a little more onboard credit. You might get a cruise next certificate. You might get a bunch of different things. So book your cruise while you're on a cruise, especially if you're having a great time. It's a great time to be right in there. Sometimes you don't even have to pick a date. You could just throw $100 down. They'll give you a $100 onboard credit or whatever. And then you can set your date with your travel agent when you get back. Next up, we talked about this in a uh, video yesterday, so you can uh, check that video out if you'd like. Choose your cabin wisely and don't take a guaranteed cabin. I've had a bunch of guests recently that have booked guaranteed cabins and said, well, we don't care where we're at. And then they get a cabin and they care where they're at. So do not book a guaranteed cabin. Pick your cabin wisely. Look at the floor plan with your travel agent or by yourself. Go through each of the deck plans, figure out what's around you. Uh, one of the great things I saw Gary Bembridge say, who's tips for travelers, he's great. But one of the great things that he says is he will only book a room where he is surrounded by rooms on both sides, across, up, and down. Very good advice to make sure you have a little bit more of a peaceful vacation. So next up. All right, next up, this is the common sense one, but we always like to drill this. Super smart travelers arrive at the port the day before their cruise, at least. So one of the things I always look at is, even, even if I'm driving, right? I'm going to New York in two weeks from today to board NCL Joy. New York is not the easiest city for people to get around in. So when I look at New York versus Bayonne. They're about the same distance for me. New York's like 10 minutes further, right? So I'm in Philadelphia. If I'm driving to Bayonne, it's about an hour. Hour, hour and 10 minutes, door to door, into the parking lot, and I'm good to go. Generally speaking, that's fine. Manhattan is about 10 minutes further. Not a huge deal, right? However, the deal with Manhattan is I have to get into the city, I have to park. It costs a fortune to park there, right? And then you have all the logistics of New York. Things can go wrong when you have more logistics like bridges, tunnels, traffic, parking. So even in New York, I get there the day ahead of the time. I take a train to New York to uh, Penn Station and then I go to my hotel. My hotel is a block from the pier. Here's the thing. By doing that, I'm spending $200 on a hotel, 
it's fine. I'm going to buy dinner. It's going to cost me 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever it costs for dinner. Uh, and then uh, my little Uber and my train ticket. Train tickets, 17 bucks. Uber to the hotel is going to be 10 bucks. So for 300 bucks, instead of $45 a day to park, which is going to be 300 to $400 and all the frustration that goes along with it and making sure I get there on time in the morning, not leaving at six o'clock in the morning to get there. So here's what I do. I stay in New York the day, the night before, and then I just walk down to the terminal. It's a lovely experience and I'm not stressed out. So save yourself the stress, get there the day before. And if you're flying, it's even crazier because right now with flights, things get canceled all the time, unless you're flying early in the morning. Generally, if you're flying early in the morning and you're, you get to the airport and that plane's there, you're usually good to go. However, you never know now. So don't risk it because if you're flying out of wherever at eight o'clock in the morning, even if it's New York or Newark or Philly, and you're going to Florida, it's only a two hour flight, right? But if you get one cancellation, you could miss the ship. So don't stress, don't do it. Next one, smart savvy cruisers, do not buy cruise line transfers. I don't like cruise line transfers. I sell them to people all the time because they want them and it's easier for them and they just wanna know, I'm gonna get off the airplane, I'm gonna see a sign that says, my name for Royal Caribbean or Norwegian or whatever it is, and they're going to take me wherever I need to go. Great. You're also waiting for a bunch of other people. You're also crammed usually into a bus or like a little van. Just take an Uber or a Lyft. It's so much easier when you get to the port. I never do cruise line transfers anymore. Most of my clients don't do cruise line transfers. Um, it's just not worth it. It's easier to do something else and it's more convenient. Next up, get for the love of God, get cruise insurance. When you are traveling outside of the United States for any reason, you should have some type of travel insurance because I think we all forget that anywhere you go, healthcare is very different, right? I, I talked about this the other day, uh, a, a few weeks ago, we talked about it, cruise insurance. And I, I, I said, just like, oh, if I'm in, you know, Mexico, I don't, if I'm on a cruise and I'm in Mexico and I have to have heart surgery, I don't want to have that heart surgery in Mexico. I want to be flown back to the United States for that. Well, there, and somebody argued with me and they're like, well, in Mexico City, they have this, well, I'm, I'm not cruising to Mexico City. I'm cruising to Cozumel or to Playa del Carmen. And they do not have state-of-the-art facilities there. Also, my health insurance isn't covered there. I'm not paying $150,000 to have heart surgery in Mexico. That's the point. So if you have health cruise health insurance, it will fly you back to the US. Uh, if anything happens and you're on the ship, God forbid, you have a stroke or a heart attack or anything like that, the Coast Guard or whoever can fly you back to a port. It's so critical to have cruise insurance. I don't even worry about it for the cruise. Whatever, if I get sick and I miss the cruise, I get it. It's good to have it for that. God forbid something happens, but I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking more about just your health. The other intricacies of cruise insurance are a little bit of a scam, but worth it if you really need it. Next up, this is a really fun one. Use a port day as your own private sea day. I love staying on the ship at certain ports like Nassau. I've been to Nassau a lot. I've been to uh, Cozumel a lot. I've been to Freeport, Bahamas a lot. So pick a port, especially if you go on a lot of cruises, pick a port that you would normally be like, ah, I don't really feel like getting off the ship and stay on the ship and do all the fun things because everybody else is off the ship. So use that port day to go on the water slides, to do the North Star or to do bumper cars or to do the Flow Rider or to do whatever thing it is on the ship that's usually really crowded on a sea day. Next up, join a roll call. They're on Facebook, Cruise Critic, whatever it is. The Facebook ones, my advice is always to join them, stay on them until the day of the cruise, and then get out of them because they get real negative once you get on the cruise ship. Uh, but they have great things there. You could do uh, slot pulls on the ship. They have cabin crawls. And you just meet a lot of people. There's a lot of interesting questions that get asked. There's a lot of back and forth communication, especially before the cruise. I think they're really valuable 
check it out. Next up is do a ton of research before your cruise on ports, excursions, the drink packages, the dining packages. Make sure you're really well informed before you get on the ship and book all of those things before you get on the ship. Super smart travelers book all of those things and are ready to go when they get on the ship. They're not stressed out running to try to book an excursion, running to try to figure out Oh, what, 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 what is in, what's in this port? What's in Grand Cayman? What's at Bermuda? Where are we docking? How do I get to here? Do all of that ahead of time because you may not have the best internet on the cruise ship. And then you're going to be upset that you didn't get to do something. Last tip is use a cruise specific travel agent. A lot of people will tell you whether to book a travel agent or not to book a travel agent. You can do whatever you want. You can certainly book cruises on your own. Now, a good cruise travel agent will have awesome information for you. Tips, tricks, the whole nine yards. Also, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with Brandon from the Weekend Cruiser, who I love. He did a he did a video the other day on uh, what uh, travel agents don't do, right? It'd be like a kind of fun like you should use a travel agent, but here's some things that they don't do. Brandon, one of the things that you said was that travel agents can't keep track of the prices of cruise lines. We absolutely can. Some, I should say, and you are correct. Most travel agents cannot do that. However, I will tell you our travel agency, uh, and we're part of a bigger conglomerate, right? Our travel agency has software. So once you book a cruise, um, it has a notification in there that I set up. It says, if this cruise drops X amount of dollars, could be 50, 100, whatever it is, could be 10. In this category, if that cruise drop, cruise price drops, notify me. I get a notification, then I can call and reprice the cruise. So Brandon, you can do that. Anyway, just kidding. Use a cruise travel agent. Uh, it, uh, it will benefit you greatly. They have all kinds of tips and tricks. You could do all kinds of fun things. They have extra little perks and things that they can do, and they'll never charge you more than the cruise line will. So a uh, bonus tip is sign up for the best arrival time. Check in. The minute you can check in with Norwegian, it's 21 days out. With Royal Caribbean, it's 45 days out. It, it, it varies on different ones. Virgin, you could do way ahead of time. Pick the best check-in time, or sh I shouldn't say check-in time. It's peer arrival time that works for you. I love getting there early to get on the ship, one of the first people on the ship and look all around, do all those fun things and get the full part of my day. However, I understand that getting to the port early means that I'm going to be there with the most people and it's going to be frustrating sometimes. The best time might be at three o'clock in the afternoon for you. You just zip right in, walk on the ship and you're good to go. So whatever works best for you is grand. Thank you so much for watching our video today. We really appreciate it. Hopefully you got some value out of it. If you did, we'd love for you to subscribe and come along on this journey with us. And we will see everyone tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye.